Hey, welcome to another episode of DeepTalks.TV. I'm Deepak Devjani, I'm a CTO and I work with founders to help grow their companies. So this series is where we'll talk about some of the biggest companies today, how do they make money, and what did they do to grow into the companies they are. Today, let's focus on Slack. I'm sure we've come across Slack at the place we work. If you haven't, Slack is just an app that teams use to communicate with one another instead of sending those long email chains back and forth or scheduling another meeting. So you can just do them in Slack. Slack allows you to have a bunch of group chats, maybe for like each department, right? You can have a group chat for marketing or a group chat for sales. They call these channels. So, so that everyone in the sales team is in one place and everyone in marketing is in, is in one place and they can kind of discuss things they need to do. So that's Slack. So Slack was launched in 2013 by Stuart Butterfield. Uh, that's also the same guy who previously launched Flickr. The funniest story is how he came across launching both these companies. He didn't intend to launch any of them. He didn't start off intending to launch Flickr or start off intending to launch Slack. Both times he just wanted to launch a game and in the process of building a game he ended up building Flickr and ended up building Slack. So how does Slack make money actually? Slack uh, makes a lot of money. In fiscal year 2020, get this, Slack made over 630 million dollars in revenues. That's a lot of money. That came from 110,000 paying customers and over 550,000 free users. Literally, huge swath of users that Slack has. They don't pay Slack any money. All that money just came from 110K paying ones. So how does that work? Slack has one of the best free plans I've seen out there, right? Uh, you can sign up for, for the app, you can make an account for you, your entire team, and you continue using it. All the features, all of them for free. All it does is it only keeps your last 10,000 messages in history. So you can't search or access messages past that. That doesn't matter to you, by all means, keep using Slack for free, right? They have that limit because they understand businesses who actually make money and who actually value having a history of all their messages will end up paying, and, 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 and they do. So there's like a free plan, and then if you want all the extra features, all the premium features, then you pay them a monthly fee, right? Just the way you pay Netflix or Spotify, you pay them for every person on your team every month. That's anywhere between six to seven dollars a month per user, and then they have this fancy plan for big companies, big enterprises, which pay them a lot more. Like it comes out to I think $32 per month per user, uh, about 350 bucks a year for each user. And these big companies have like thousands of employees that they need to put on Slack. That's how Slack actually makes it. It's called software as a service, a SaaS. Netflix is a SaaS, Google apps are SaaS, your Spotify, Apple Music, all of those are subscription services. That's exactly how Slack also does it. Now let's talk about how did Slack get all these users? They did a bunch of genius things before launch that really had a monumental impact on the quality of their product. And then they did a bunch of super interesting things after launch to get it in front of the right type of people. So let's talk about them separately. So before launch, the founders of Slack wanted to actually build a game, right? So they put together a team of like 40 designers and developers and they, and they hired these people all over the world. In the process of building the game, they realized they needed, needed a way to talk to each other and discuss things throughout the day and they didn't want to send emails. So they just like customized this really bare bones, basic version of like chat rooms and, and group chat software that they just built for themselves. This time for a three year long period, like all, these, all they would be doing was they would use this software of like this, this chat room kind of thing. And every time they felt the need, the burning desire for a feature, like, oh, maybe I wish I could search here. I wish I could like tag people. I wish I could like notify people. Like every time they came across the need, they would just go change their focus away from the game, quickly go build this tiny feature and then get back to the game. And they did this several iterations of this. So they didn't just like think of it. They actually used the software. They used their app themselves. And that's how they knew but at the end of that three year period, like, oh my God, why don't we just go to market with this? We actually do use this and we can't imagine our lives without this app, without, without being able to collaborate like, like this. So that process of iterative development of like coming up with a feature based on need, building it really quick and actually using it and seeing whether you are, whether you are actually using it or not, uh, that's called dog fooding, right? Using it themselves. This helped the Slack team ensure that they were solving a real problem, a tangible problem, and the way they were solving it uh, actually worked. They actually wanted to use it. They couldn't imagine their lives without using this. Once they had spent some time using their own product and then realized they wanted to go to market with this, they said, okay, great. 
it's not enough that we we used it. We need to give it to other teams like us. So then they found other teams, other companies that were similar to theirs, where they, where they were not all locked up in, a, in one particular office and they were all over the world. And they said, well, whatever, like, hey, can you use this? Can you tell me what you think about it? So then they gave it to their friends and at a company of like 50 people. Okay, and then they observed, like, okay, they asked, are you using this feature? Are you using this feature? And the teams would be like, yeah, great, but it's like, it like really crashes here and it has this problem, this problem, this problem, and I wish it could do blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, great. They would just go build those tiny features and then give it back to them. Let's see if you use it now. And they went through these cycles, numerous cycles of this sort, where they would quickly test it out at a larger size company and then a larger size company and larger than that. And they would see which features they would use and which features they felt like it was lacking. And they would quickly go build those features. They listened to feedback and then gave it back to them and then observed the behavior. This went on for a while. Now let's talk about the things they did during and after launch to actually grow. The founders of Slack were, had previously also launched from the company. So they had some media contacts. They had some connections. They had some name for themselves. They did a lot of PR hype. Founders of Flickr launching this new thing. They're, they'll kill emails. They understood one thing. It is not going to be enough if just one person in a company uses this. The entire company or the entire team or their entire team needed to use it. They needed that mass market recognition and appeal and, and that, that, that intrigue and all that. All this PR push resulted in them having a 20,000 long waiting list of people just waiting to get in and then let, it, let everybody in right away. They waited, they slowly waited. They only let enough people in that they could work with and hear feedback from and continue improving the product. And they waited to get enough people within a team or a company. They knew like, okay, there's 10 people here, they'll most likely use it. One person is not going to use it. And that's how they rolled them up. So they would release it to the next batch of 10 companies and then the next batch of 10 companies and see how they did. How do you get in front of these companies? Traditionally, it's been really hard for anyone to sell apps and software to businesses. It's a long sales cycle. You have to hire salespeople to get in front of these companies, sell them contracts, blah, blah, blah. Whole ordeal. It's a Pandora's box. Slack just flipped that strategy on its head. Slack said, you know what? I'm not going to go this traditional route. I'm not even going to hire salespeople. What they did was they didn't go after selling the whole company at once. They just went to a smaller team within the company. They just went after, let's say your company has 100 co employees. They just went after the five person sales team or the eight person marketing team or the four people customer support team and said, hey, what are you guys using to talk to each other all day? Why don't you use Slack? So they went after these smaller teams within a large company, knowing that these smaller teams usually have their own budget and, and they purposefully priced Slack low enough that it would fit within their tiny budgets within the company. They, they didn't need to get company's approval, right? They said, okay, it's like $6 a month per user. For you four guys, like $24, why don't you just sign up and start using it? They got these people using it. And that was like one of those Trojan horse strategies where one team starts using it. They start telling their colleagues. Now the marketing team starts using it. And then the sales team starts using it slowly. Majority of the companies already using it, but just paying separately for it. And they had enough of these people, enough of these teams using, that's when they could go to the big organization heads and say, you know what? Most of the people are already using it, get everybody on it and we give you a better deal. It's much easier to sell at that point in time. Through all this, you know all that time I said, they spent a lot of time observing how users were using their apps and uh, what was making them stick, what was making them like not like it. All that observation resulted in them realizing that there was this metric, this thing called the North Star metric, um, that said if a brand new user comes in and does these particular actions and they are sold. They'll always be using Slack, they'll love Slack, they'll see the value and all that stuff. But if they don't do these things, they're most likely to like not even use it. And they knew this was important because let's say you get out of that four person tiny customer support team, if only three of them are using it and this fourth person doesn't use it, it's a fail and no one will use it. So they wanted everyone within a team to, to use it. They put a lot of time and effort figuring out what this metric was that would make people stick, this threshold. And for Slack, that was realized somebody sent 2,000 messages, right, in the first X number of days, then they were 93% sure, 93% likely to just stick with Slack. As a result of this, Slack kind of changed up the entire way you get onboarded in the app. Like it guides you to start sending these messages. Like, oh, like ping this person, ping that person, say hello. You're just trying to get you past that threshold. They know they need you to get past it to, for it to be sticky for you. So figure out what that metric is for your app and then drive users towards completing that threshold. 
Facebook had it, Slack had it, many large companies know what this metric is internally. Awesome, well, there you have it. Now you know how Slack made its money and, uh, and, and, uh, and the strategies they used to kind of grow their business. If you like the video, I'm sure you learned something new. Uh, I would appreciate it if you like it, share it. Uh, and most importantly, tell me in comments or like tweet at me or whatever, what do you think Slack can do to increase their revenues, to kind of grow their revenues? Is there anything that Slack's not doing correctly? Anything that you would improve in Slack, the actual business model? I'm all ears. So there you have it. Thanks again for watching. This is Deepak Devjani signing off. Till next time.